Hello, I'm going to make a quick video because I finally came up with a way that I'm personally going to pack in uh, all my hunting gear and all my filming gear. This is the first year that I've really taken the camera, a camcorder into the field. So I'm going to go through what I came up with. This is all based on a, a very old, probably 30 year old Dwight Shoe uh, Peak One hunting pack. So let me just show you how I've got this. And this is all put together. I weighed this thing. 29 pounds. Now I don't have water and food in here, so you'd have to add that. But real quickly, let me just show you how this comes apart. I've got a couple compression straps that I added to the pack so I can attach my helium sticks to the top. Sandwiched between the two packs is my Clems platform, or I'll use my uh, new tethered uh, Predator. But then basically there's two packs. The first pack will go with me up into the tree. And I'll get to this here in a minute. This bottom pack I have compression straps on. And the reason why I chose to leave this on here was so that it holds my other pack up. Because this is strapped to the Dwight Shoe pack. Alright, and inside of here, basically what I have in here is I have my hunting saddle. I also have my one tether or my one uh, foot aider that I use to go up my three hot healings. And then I have this pack right here. And this pack right here has everything I need to prep and hunt a tree. Okay, inside of it, I've got my lineman's belt. I've got my pruners. I always carry pruners because sometimes I haven't been up in a, this tree that I might be hunting today in over a year, sometimes two or three years, and there's no doubt limbs and poison ivy and stuff that I'll need to trim on the way up there. So I've got that in there. I've got a uh, lineman's belt that I put together, and I this is the Ultra Tech, the smaller size, with a Ropeman 2 on it. I've got a wire gate on this side, and a locking carbiner on this side, and what I do is I clip this one in, I use this one here, to go around and make adjustments because I'm right-handed. So I'll keep that on my right-hand side. I also in here have two Amera steps on a boat buckle strap that if I'm in a really big tree and I want to put a couple steps to where I can move to position a little bit better, I'll carry these. 90% of the time I don't use this. Then I also have my tree tether. This is predator rope that I had them splice on this end. I've got a castration band that helps me to really push this up tight to keep it from sliding down the tree. I put a stopper knot in this end, and then I've got a Ropeman one with a carbiner on this side. That's my tether. I do not have a real big tether. It's about six foot. Uh, very seldom will I get in a tree much bigger than that. Most of the time I'm actually hunting in trees about, oh, I'd say that size right there. Okay, so this is plenty long enough. I do have other tethers if I know from my logbook that I'm going to go hunt a big cottonwood and I need a longer tether and longer ropes for my uh, helims. I'll, I'll take note of that and I'll put that on there. My bridge is two screw gate carbiners on, once again, the Ultratech, the smaller size. I really like this stuff and this is my bridge. It's 20, uh, 24 inches, I believe, or 20 inches is my bridge. And it works out perfect, about 24 inches with the loops on my uh, saddle. That works out just about perfect. The only other thing that I carry in this pack is in the front side, I've got a couple pull ropes. I've got a T screw that I put on the back side of the tree. This is to hold my tether at height because of the way I hunt it and also to hang my pack from. And then I've got a screw and a bow hanger. If I'm hunting in places where I cannot use my uh, screw in stuff, then I will use a strap on hanger. That's all that goes in this pouch, and that's all that's in here. Like I said, this will stay at the base of the tree until I come down in the evening. Okay? We can get some of this cleared out of the way so we can go through what's in my pack. Okay, in my hunting pack, in the main pouch right here. I keep nothing. If I have some food or snacks that I want to take with me, that's what's going to go in there. On this side right here, I have nothing currently in there, but that's where my water bottle would go. On this side here, I only have a couple items. I'll keep my shooting glove in there, a face mask. I will keep a saw and a grunt call. 
And that's all that goes in that side. In the main part of the pack, I put my two knee pads and I put this on top to kind of protect everything in here. I've got my fourth arrow camera arm with a fluid head. I have this little pouch right here that I really like, it's magnetic closure, but this is where I keep my binoculars. Inside of my little warm toboggan, this is where I keep my uh, fourth arm tree bracket, and I put a boat buckle on there and wrapped up my little tool and camo form tape and camo did it all up, so I keep that in in this little toboggan, and mainly it's just to keep this here from doing any damage to anything on the inside of the pack. There's a little side pocket in here, a little in internal pocket. I keep some brown tacks. I put these at height where I want my platform to go, so every time I climb that tree, I know exactly where my platform goes. Uh, and that's mainly because I trim shooting lanes, and if you get above or beyond that, you know, you can ch really change the the view that you get through the shooting lane. Now I bought this on Amazon. This is just a little camera insert bag, but what I've got in here is I've got my shotgun mic, my range finder, and then I've got my Sony camera. Okay, so I'm really looking forward to doing it this year uh, for the first time. I don't know how often I'll do this. I'm really, this is a lot of extra weight and I, I think it adds to the pain. <laughs> of hiking all this stuff into some of the areas. So we'll see how, how much I do this. Now, you can connect this with Velcro to the outside. I choose not to do that. I just put it to where it's on the inside and go down both sides of the camera and the shotgun mic. That's how I keep that. Then there's a, another internal pocket in this pack right here. It's a long pocket. The other three pockets I was telling you about are right here and you can put small items in here. But what I keep in here is I keep a first aid kit with nose spray, some Motrin, some Tylenol, bandages, and some toilet paper. I keep an extra coin purse with some milk weed seeds in it that I use for wind detection. I keep my kill kit, and there's a video that I've got on my YouTube channel that goes over exactly what all I keep in here. I keep an extra card in case I check a camera. I keep some extra batteries in there also. I keep one small extra light just in case my main headlight goes out. I've got a backup to walk out of the woods. And then I keep a one gallon plastic bag. And that's really all that I keep in there. That is my entire contents of my pack. That is everything I need to hunt. Now some might ask, why did you put your saddle and you know this pouch or the one pouch, the knee pads and all that in my a backpack system because I kayak a lot of times and I might be uh, getting out in three to four foot deep water and I don't want all this stuff getting soaked so I keep it in my pack and what I like about the Dwight shoe is once I get off the kayak and all this is strapped together I can simply pick it up over my head walk to the bank and set it up there okay I will usually keep my sticks unattached and, and I'll hand carry them if it's going to be a close hike from the creek. Uh, just simply to cut down on the weight of the pack. But, you know, lifting 30 pounds over my head is not really that difficult for me. So I don't mind doing that. So the only other thing I have to do once I shoulder this pack is carry my bow. Uh, right now my shoulder's been holding up. So I'm fully planning on hunting with my uh, Carabao Tuku extreme recurve we'll see how this shoulder it's not my bow shoulder it's my draw shoulder i heard it doing some military presses and deadlifts this year lifting weights so i haven't been lifting in about three months and it, it's starting to recover but I, i've got damage in there from years of weight lifting and shooting heavy bows so that's my system uh leave your comments below and i'll get to them but this is what i i've come up with i like having the rigid pack and I really don't mind leaving it at the base of my tree. I don't believe in all this scent control. Uh, I think it's very limited. I think deer absolutely know when you climb a tree. And it's so hot down here in Texas, you'd sweat so much. I mean, I would soak through a, a scent lock suit anyway. So I, I don't even worry about scent control. And I, like I said, I set up to where I have a barrier between me and where I expect the deer to go. Now, do they ever come by the tree? Of course they do. 